Welcome back to Bible study. Welcome back to Psalm 18. We can't say that on many of the Psalms because we do them all in one go, but we, we've got halfway through. Welcome, John. Thank you. Derek. Thank you. Very exciting Psalm, Psalm 18. And I think it's my turn to read and John will pray. So we're going to start from verse 25. Quiet and down now. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, clear my throat. With the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. With a blameless man, you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. And with the devious, you will show yourself shrewd. For you will save the humble people, but will bring down haughty looks. For you will light my lamp, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For you, for by you, I can run against a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and sets me on my high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarged my path under me, so my feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again until they were destroyed. I have wounded them so that they could not rise. They have fallen under my feet. For you have armed me with strength for battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. You have also given me the necks of my enemies so that I destroyed those who hated me. They cried out, but there was none to save, even to the Lord, but he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine as the dust before the wind. I cast them out like dirt in the streets. You have delivered me from the strivings of the people. You have made me the head of the nations. A people I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they obey me. The foreigners submit to me. The foreigners fade away and come frightened from their hideouts. The Lord lives. Blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God who avenges me and subdues the people under me. He delivers me from my enemies. You also lift me up against those who rise against me. You have delivered me from the violent man. Therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the Gentiles, and sing praises to your name. Great deliverance he gives to his king and shows mercy to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. Amen. 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 Thank you, John. Heavenly Father, what a wonderful word we've just heard. Father God, let, will, may you be exalted in our discussions here today, Lord, and in our understanding and the understanding of those at home as they follow with us, Lord, as we look to dig deep into your word as you reveal to us by your spirit the deep truths that are there. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this wonderful gift. Thank you for the union we have with you in Christ and with the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, we ask you now in the name of Jesus just to take over, Lord, to inspire us by your Spirit as you did to David, that we might truly understand what you have to say to us. Be exalted, O God, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow. It, um, really inspiring just to read to read this um, declamation, I would say. It was, it's not just, there are elements where he's weaving in and out of a personal um, acknowledgement of the Lord. There are other times when he, David is absolutely declaiming it yeah. 
to all who might hear, mm. how great is our God, how great is his name. Yes. Praise the Lord. So we got halfway through last week, yes. um, Derek, and we, we ended on a, a dramatic, you know, um, analogy really mm. of, you know, typology of the Lord. Yes, um, yes there's some wonderful typology going on. And uh, it's, it is, of course, about David. And uh, we know from the, the heading of the psalm, if we could just mention that quickly, it, it says, he spoke to the Lord the words of this song on the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies mm. and from the hand of Saul. And, and you can, he's, he's looking back now, mm. now that he has accomplished great things and even the nations round about are in submission to him. This is, was extraordinary uh, what God did through his anointing. And he's looking back and he's giving thanks to God for all that he's done and all the victories that have been won. Uh, and he's acknowledging that it's only by God's power yeah. that this has been done. And of course, behind this is, is typology because what God did actually at this same time was make a covenant with David um, in 2 Samuel um, 9, uh, 7, sorry. He made a covenant with David saying, one day I am going to, I'm going to establish your throne, David. I've established you on the throne in Jerusalem, but I'm going to establish your throne forever. And I'm going to put one of your s children, one of your sons, mm. the Messiah, on that throne and he will reign forever and ever. It's brilliant. And so oh, you can't, he is, is, you want to lift off the seat as you hear <laughs> yeah, that. Today. Yeah, Dave, and David's a prophet and of course he... And he acknowledges the Lord. So he's yes. not, you know, just taking these powers and no. he's, he's not in any way he's not boasting. twisting. Yeah. He's not boasting, he's not twisting it to say that, look what I've achieved like, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, look at the Babylon I've created. Yeah. He's acknowledging the Lord. Yeah, that's right. And could, he, we, could, we, could we take it with such humility, you know, when the Lord gives you such an incredible mantle exactly. to wear? Well, of course, he's been prepared, hasn't he? I, you know, I think of David, who's the giant of the Old Testament, one of the giants of the Old Testament, and Paul. Um, I mean, completely different, but Paul was totally prepared, you know, in his religious education, in his mm. academic education. In, 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 he was totally prepared for the job that the, because he was born to it. He yeah. just didn't know it till he was on the road to Damascus. David, completely different set of experiences, but from a young lad, you know, tending his father's sheep and fighting off the wild animals and winning victories, which he knew that he could never win in his own strength. Yeah. So he walked with the Lord mm. all the time, being prepared so that when he's really in it, he knows he's got lots of experience mm. in trusting the Lord. Amazing. Uh, yeah, he couldn't do it in his own strength, and yet yes. he could absolutely do it with God's strength. That's right. You know, yeah. yeah. And okay, he, keep going with the typology. Let's. Yeah. Yeah, because again, we can read Psalm 18 as as David's life. Yeah. Uh, thanking God for the victories in his life. Yeah. But such is the spirit of prophecy in this psalm that ultimately it's speaking about the son of David, the great son of David, the Messiah, who we know his name now, Jesus yeah. Christ, mm -hmm. who, who will fulfill this psalm on the bigger level. And we see there's a lot of parallels. So for example, um, and because he said one of your sons, they, it's understood that there'll be a parallelism between the son of David and David himself. So David, looking back at the stages of his life, if we just follow that through with, and follow it with Christ, he starts off doing great things. You know, he kills Goliath. He, he, he has great victories, all right? And he does miraculous things, really, um, like Christ. Mm. But yet, after a bit, the establishment, you know, Saul's house, yeah. gets jealous, yeah. gets suspicious, just like with Jesus, starts to actually plot against his life mm. and he's in great danger and of course now David actually is is having to <laughs> hide himself often from these authorities on the wrong run from Saul and that's a big stage of his life and um, we see that in in the first coming of Jesus mm. you know and um, and yet he's d done nothing wrong to deserve that yeah. um, and then of course we what happens is that at the end of 1 Samuel is at the first turning point when Saul dies. Yeah. Um, and David is then, and now we're in, in mm. 2 Samuel chapter 2, yeah. David is actually anointed king 
This yeah. is the because his kingship was for forty years, and it's actually measured from this point when he's made king in Hebron. Yeah. But actually, it's not the whole of Israel because all Israel did not come to David at this time. time. Only his own tribe, Judah. Yeah. And he, in the chaos of Saul's defeat, David had enough of an army. He could have forced yeah. his control over Israel. But likewise, Christ could, in a sense, having risen from the dead and been anointed king in, in, in heaven at least, um, is a bit similar to this. Um, but he didn't enforce his authority yeah. over Israel and so forth, because in God's plan, Israel has got to come under his authority first, and then the nations will come mm. under his authority. Uh, under his power. Um, Jesus didn't now force himself. That's an important himself. point because just John, John so when we're, we're placing this in the timeline, yeah. Israel hasn't yet come under. No, it hasn't. No, Lord. So right. those that say, oh, well, um, Jesus is ruling the nations today, that isn't really it's happening. It's not really true. You know, that's the there's a, it, there's an element of truth position. in it, yes. but it's not, it's not right. the fulfillment of what is being done. Not talked literally. About. Yeah. yeah. That's so, right. so there's there's an important stage, you know, in terms of, of no, the, the Lord this is what, what Derek, gathering. Yeah, the I mean, what Derek is saying is absolutely key, and and it's not that we must belittle the Davidic yeah. side of the psalm, the, because it's through his experience that we learn, because we can identify with David and and yeah. his struggles and and how he deals with them. So that's very important. Yeah. We'll we'll come to that, as it were, level of practical understanding yeah. as well. But this is so important, this typology, mm. because it helps us. It helps cement in us the truth because it, we, we see it again and again. And, and, and w when, you know, the disciples were on the road to Emmaus and Jesus came beside them, they didn't recognize him. He showed them mm. what must happen through the scriptures. Yeah. It's just this sort of thing yeah. that he would show. Oh, it's exactly. not immediately obvious, no. but when it's explained, it becomes obvious yeah. and, mm. and it's just well, It's obvious, that it, you know, from the Lord's perspective, you know, yes. when I, I, um, we referred to our last week talking about the shadow of his wings, he says, how I've longed to gather you. Yes. Mm. He didn't, he longed for it, but mm. it didn't happen. Right. You no. know, he came to his own. His own did not receive him. That's right. But to all who received him. So we're, we're in that stage where it is before the gathering, as it were, of, mm. of the chicks under his yes. wings. And yeah, then that's, that's, we know when that happens that we're entering another phase. Mm. Yes. Yes. And in the typology, of course, the church is a mystery. So in a way, we, we, we need to kind of jump over the church age in terms of the outworking with Israel and the nations. Yeah. Um, not that church isn't important, no. but we're looking at it from the point of view of Israel and the nations. Yeah. Um, there is seven years yet to run on God's clock, which we talked about, the Daniel 70th week. And it's interesting that David's reign in Hebron was for seven years. Mm. And uh, it's interesting, during that time, David did not have an aggressive war against the, the house of Saul. In fact, it was a defensive war. And he, and he didn't do it himself. He let Joab go ahead and do it. So he was exalted as king, but he, he himself was not one, treating his own people as, as his enemies. Um, and, and yes, when they attacked, they, they, they won. Yeah. But he did not try and take the kingdom for himself. Yeah. He was trusting God to, you know, yeah. to do it. And it's oh, I like that verse that says, and with the devious, you will show yourself shrewd. Yeah. So that's quite shrewd that David <laughs> yeah. didn't try it and, you know, top yes. them all, yes. all his enemies. He, they were devious, they were devious, he was, but he was shrewd, he, he was, waited. He was humbling himself, yeah. particularly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting that it says, so in the typology, what, I'm, what I saw is that this seven years at Hebron, it's the f he is king, mm. but his people have not, as a whole, received him as king. Yeah. Yeah. But that's going to change in the tribulation, all right? And it says that these seven years represent the tribulation when Israel will come to the Lord. Mm. Um, it says the war between the house of Saul, this is in 2 Samuel 3, verse 1, lasted a long time, seven years. The, David grew stronger and stronger while the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. Yeah. And also many, then it goes on to say, many of his sons were born during this time. Mm. So 
During this time... It's quite profound, isn't it? I mean, you, you've been involved in military. You know, it, it's not a flashbang wallop, you know, and, and then it's... Really? All, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's attritional. Yeah. And then eventually the enemy's weakened and yes. subdued. And it become clearer more, to more and more people in Israel that God was with David. Mm. You know, and during the tribulation, more and more of the Jews will start, will start coming to yeah. Christ. Mm. And, uh, and by the end of the seven years, all Israel came to David and all Israel will, will come to the Lord Jesus mm. Christ. Many will be killed, don't get me wrong, but, but by the end, all Israel will put their trust in Christ. And, and so that's, and, and that w that's what happened at the end of the seven years. Um, David was then received and anointed king that's right. over the whole of Israel. That was the next major yeah. Step. Yeah. It's still not when all his enemies were defeated, no. but this is when well, all of the house of the uh, of, of, Israel. of Israel were united. Yeah, exactly. And that is a key turning point. And yeah. at that point, and and David was already anointed when he was made king at Hebron, and yeah. we're going to see this that that he already knew the power of God was on him, and he could have, you know, taken Israel by force, but that wasn't God's way. Now. Once in the tribulation, he would have had the rest of his time trying to manage Israel rather than Israel looking out and right. taking, yeah. taking the enemies around. And, and that's what you quoted in Matthew 23. He's waiting for that time yeah. when they, when Israel will, as a whole, will welcome him. The elders of Israel, all of the tribes, came to him and said, "Look." We want you to be our king. You are the right king. And that's what's going to happen at the end of the tribulation. Uh, Israel will, will repent of their judicial decision to reject him of the Messiah. They will officially receive him as the Messiah. They will call on him and the battle of our, you know, the, the Antichrist at this time will be invading Israel. They'll be under great threat. Mm -hmm. They will be calling on Jesus, Yeshua, to return you see, and his second coming will be in response to that. And that's when David, similarly at the end of seven years, David takes the throne and now he's anointed and now he can use his power mm -hmm. because Israel now is united under him. And at what, what he does first in, I think it's chapter, um, let me see, uh, chapter, he becomes king over all Israel in 2 Samuel 5, yeah. and immediately he conquers Jerusalem. Yeah. Right. So what happens as soon as they receive Jesus as See, king? What folks, um, you know, listening might not realize, you know, being a, a ruler at Hebron, it's just, it's south of Jerusalem. Sometimes on the Israel trips, we go there and see, mm. the, you know, the tomb of the patriarchs. And yeah, it's a different ball game, taking, taking Jerusalem. Oh, yeah. But I mean, that's an interesting story yeah. in itself because yeah. I think David was a, the way he took Jerusalem was through the waterworks. That's right. And there's a there's a whole Could story I, there. I'd but step back just to say that that you know the uh, you know secular archaeologists have tried to poo-poo the whole story of David. But when you firstly when you read it, it's not there's it doesn't have a sense of mythology about it. It has a sense of history, mm -hmm. a historical narrative. And then when you discover scriptures that correlates to archaeological yeah. you know, discoveries like you, the pipe, you can you work know, which he used to defeat yeah. the Deb Jebusite the city. Yeah. Well, he was a shepherd boy. Five, yeah. he, he grew up Bethlehem, five miles away, and he was an adventurous lad. Yeah. And this is what I imagine as he takes the sheep around Jerusalem, uh, he would have explored the waterworks. You know the tunnels, yeah, and you, and, yeah. and it, they, they that what they've discovered now is this massive spring tower, in, you know, in the city of David, um, and it, it it was impregnable, but the the waters from the, which surrounded the Gion Spring, but of course the waters have to go out through tunnels, yeah. and David no doubt would have swum through those tunnels. Mm -hmm. And, and discovered how to get inside that fortress. And that's why he told Joab, I think, you know, if, if we're gonna take the city, it seems impregnable, but you've got to go in through the water. Through the pipe. Yeah, and that's yeah. exactly what happened. You <laughs> just surprise attack, you know. Yeah. It is yeah. Yeah. It's something, yeah. isn't it? It's amazing. amazing. Yeah, he would, yeah. Someone like David wouldn't have resisted, no, wouldn't no. resisted you know, exploring. Yeah. Few the, young boys <laughs> would. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So he took it's, Jerusalem it's, it's an epic. immediately. <laughs> it's an epic. Uh, if you look at the chronology yeah, of right. it, he took, um, um, you know, it says he reigned in Hebron seven odd years. 
He reigned in Jerusalem 33 years. So he took Jerusalem immediately. And that's what Jesus is, will do in, in Armageddon, isn't it? He's, that's right. uh, he comes, the leaders of Jerusalem welcome him back. He takes Jerusalem yeah. and he destroys the Antichrist. And, and then it goes on in, say, chapter 8. There's a chapter that... So it's incongruous that he wasn't received by his own, really, when, when he was fulfilling all these messianic prophecies. But it wasn't God's timing. Mm. It wasn't the season for fruit. And, and then in God's time, the Father knows the times and the seasons that he's set by his own authority. Mm. We will receive power yeah. when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. And we'll be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. And then, as it were, at that time, when the gospel's been preached to all, um, peoples, yes. um, then we have this point where, where the Lord comes back to rule, mm. where, where um, Israel, I, I'm, I'm messing up your time, <laughs> but, um, uh, but, you, but you know, get, get to that point where all these prophecies have been fulfilled and that key prophecy of, of Israel yes. recognizing mm. the one that they've pierced. Yes. That's so at the Amazing end of completeness. The Lord doesn't leave anything. There's, there's a wonderful verse that we read, actually, saying that God is proven. Um, mm. uh, and that's, that's important. His I can't remember where proven. it was. It's right around his word. It's so quite early on, because yes. it's 50-odd fifty well, verses. It's verse 30. Mm. The word of the Lord is proven. Mm. Yeah. That's so important, because, um, you know, all these prophecies and the typology is proven when it's fulfilled. Mm. So we, we know the typology, and we were doing it last week, of, of the Lord, um, mm. you know, his death, his resurrection being brought into a broad place. But these further prophecies have to be fulfilled yeah. yes. for God's word to be proved. Yes. yes, that's right. You can't prove something unless it's happened mm. <laughs> before your eyes. Exactly. And, and, and so, you know, in terms of the nations, um, in terms that you mentioned Armageddon, in terms of, of Israel recognizing the Lord Jesus, all of that has to be proven. Mm. Yes, and David's looking back and saying, God made promises to him and they were proven. Yeah. And he's looking back. And, and in, in chapter 8, he didn't just capture Jerusalem, it describes almost, the impression is in the same year, he defeats the Philistines, he defeats all the surrounding nations, mm. Syria. Mm. Um, they all come under his power. They all have to kind mm. of make peace with him. Mm. And in quick time, he defeats all the surrounding nations. Yeah. Now, this is when he wrote this psalm. At the, so we see the same thing because at Armageddon, he actually defeats all the armies of the world that have been gathered together. Mm. Jesus defeats all those armies mm. and, and then he will establish his kingdom on the earth, the millennium king, millennial kingdom, when he will be the head over all the nations. Yeah. And we'll see that in the psalm. Great. So I want to step back because that's a great, a brilliant overview of the typology. But John, in verse 28, well, really that early yeah, section, we, we, it's we talking about him, merciful, you. blameless, yeah, we have, we, we um, have pure, uh, um, and, and then saving the humble, bringing down the haughty, yes. And then it's quite, you'll it's, light my lamp. It's quite a when I first read it, I thought this is a complicated use of words. And I, it took me a little while to get into it, but it's the gospel. It's absolutely the gospel because what it say this uh, the, the word translated merciful means kind. Yeah. Um, with the kind, you will show yourself kind. With a blameless man, you will show yourself capital Y mm. blameless, and with the pure, you will show yourself pure. Well. If such a man hasn't been born yet except the yeah. Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. So it's referring to he who is in Christ. Mm. He who is in Christ will be seen by God as he sees Christ. He'll be seen as blameless, he'll be seen as pure, he'll be seen as kind. Mm. All the qualities of Christ, yeah. the God the Father sees in us because of Christ in us. Mm. That's the only way I can make any sense of this. I'm not saying there isn't another sense. Yeah. Um, I, you know, but I got there by a circuitous route. Yeah. But I believe that this is the gospel. Um, because none of us are those things. It's nice that the Christ. translators put the capital I mean, Y. I mean, Christ there. himself, of course, in, in, in the typology. Yeah. But in, in, as David's ref, you know, referring to mankind generally here, yeah. It must be those who are saved, those who are in Christ. Yeah. And it's just awesome. And then the haughty are those who are not in Christ because in their pride they've rejected him. They've rejected what's yeah. on offer. They've rejected the gospel message. Yeah. 
and, and you'll, you'll save the humble. Yes. So, so we were talking earlier, weren't we, about verse 28 and the lightning of the lamp, but it's, it's like it's, it's prepping the reader to that point yes. of humility yes. where yes. we're ready for the Lord to light the lamp. Exactly so. And it takes humility to say, I need a saviour. Yeah. Mm. But it's a humility that God in his grace and mercy helps us with. Yeah. He's not, it, he does the work in us yeah. to cause that humility. And if, if the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? And yeah. those that have that kind of light yes. are not really prepared for the Lord to lighten their lamps. No. Mm. You know, they think they've got the lights, yes. but it is darkness, but they're absolutely darkness. convinced they've got the enlightenment. Yeah, so they don't need they're any not further ready. revelation. They're not they don't, they don't, they're not. They need nothing else. Yeah, okay, so, so yeah, if we're not skipping too quickly, verse 28. The li- you, you will light my lamp, yes, and the I, Lord will, God will enlighten mm. my darkness. And, and as you said, it's also because David and Christ humbled themselves yeah. that, that God exalted them, yeah. whereas yeah. God will put down the, the proud. Mm. And um, I just wanted to make a little comment yeah. on when it says, with the devious, you will show yourself shrewd, yes. which is an interesting yeah, line. And yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to take the time to explore it, but sometimes people see God, you know, as, um, well, malevolent or, you know, they... Mm. But it's or the reason so is, benign that he's effect, uh, ineffective. Yes. Well, they see him as twisted. They sit, they, you know, yeah. they accuse okay, him yes, of doing sure. evil things. Sure. But it's because they themselves are devious in the That's sense right. that they are twisted. Yeah. So they, they, you know, they see that. And the classic example is Balaam, by the way, in yeah. this story. Yeah. Um, that um, you know, if if they think the way God is dealing with them, it's really saying if you are a kind of um, manipulative, perverse person, and you try and manipulate God, a bit like Jacob and mm. that, mm. you know, God will play your own game. And, He's a and good he, chess and he, and he will, yeah, if you want to play chess with God, he yeah. will, he will yeah. outwit you. Yeah. And, and if you strive against God, mm. he will strive against you. Mm. And in Jacob's case, praise God, he wrestled That's right. with the Lord. Yeah. And praise God, God brought him to a place of submission. Yeah. But um, if, you, if you're going to play that game with God, but, God but he will wanted to be you. blessed, didn't he? You yeah. know, David was a, uh, sorry, Jacob was a character. He was a you believer. Know, he really yeah. did. Yeah. He was a believer. Mm. Yeah, he really, yes. he, he just, w- in his own strength, was trying to bring, you know, God into, you know, into submission, as it were, yeah. to what but he wanted. It's just a warning, really. If you, if you set yourself against God, yeah. he's much cleverer than you, and he mm. will play your, your own game in a sense yeah. and righteously mm. and and you know you won't win no, <laughs> if, you, if you think you can outwit <laughs> god forget it but being shrewd <laughs> being shrewd as i read it isn't being devious no no being shrewd is managing the devious devi- exactly managing those who are devious yes. in a, shrewdness is a form of wisdom exactly. yeah but yeah, uh, to answer your question, yeah, okay. um, now we move into a new section in a way, because the previous yeah. section was he, David is describing his great um, deliverance from mm. his enemies. Mm. Uh, and, and that corresponds to Christ being saved from his enemies, raised from the dead, mm. as it were, installed as king in heaven, mm. you know, as like Hebron. And now he moves... Um, in, to talk about his empowerment now. And I believe at this point, when David was made king, he, he felt this great empowerment. Mm. He knew that God had anointed him yeah. to be that king and to do great things for Israel. Mm. Um, and in the same way, Jesus was empowered because when he was raised from the dead, you know, God, as it were, regenerated his whole humanity, glorified his humanity, yeah. anointed him to be king. And, yeah. But mostly I'd want to apply it to us because we're in Christ. Yeah. And what he did, the same power that raised Christ from the dead, the Bible says, was released into our spirits and yeah. we were born again. And so yes. I, I, that's yeah, what I think. This could be analogous we, to being born filled with the Spirit. You will light my lamp, you know. Yeah. Yes. Because the Spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord, Proverbs yeah. twenty twenty seven. That's right. That's right. And, and that's what God did for us. Yeah. He lit our lamp. He, that, that, he, we were born again when we trusted in him, yeah. when, when we did that. And the Lord, will, my God, will enlighten my darkness. And, and with the, with the, um, the ten 
uh, virgins that you know it, it's symbolic of the the oil the holy spirit and then the lamps being lit of right. believers yes yeah. You know, but we're walking in the light. But his word becomes alive, doesn't it? Mm. So you get this word that is alive and active, yeah. as it says in Hebrews, and yeah. sharper than any two-edged sword. And, and for those that are not born again, it's not. It's as dead as a dodo. I mean, yeah. you know, they'll tell you, how can you read the Bible? It's boring. Yeah. Well, it was boring before we were born again. Yeah. And, and then it becomes alive. And so we have the verse from Psalm 119, which I'm going to try, and I might get it the wrong way around. Yeah. You know, the, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a yeah, light, light unto my path. Yes. Or is it the other way around? No, it it doesn't one. matter. Yeah. Um, the, the meaning is quite clear. Yeah. Yes. And, and it can only do that because it is literally light. It's showing you the way, this way, not that way. Yeah. This mm. way, that yeah, way. Also, I like the, 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 the duality. So it's got, it's got this as I read it, and I know people see it differently, but, but a, a little lamp, your little oil lamp to my feet that yes. stops me tripping up. Yes. So it's helping you in the immediate challenges. And also but the way forward, it's helping. Showing you yes. the prophetic lights. Yes. We have the lights of the prophets, you know, yes. we, we have that shining yes. um, into the future. I, I like that, the yes, two aspects. Yes, that's good, I like that. Yeah. Yes. So God has spoken, when we're born again, it says we're born again by the word of God, the incorruptible yeah. seed, yeah. And, and that lit up our spirit. Yeah. And now as we continue in the word of God, he lights up our soul. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and praise God. And we have the word of the prophets made more certain. You do well to pay attention to as to a light shining in a dark place till the day dawns and the morning star rises mm. in your hearts. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. Yes. Or you know, the light, what is it? The light of the knowledge of the glory of oh God, God in the face of the Lord Jesus. That, that's light. Mm. It's not just light when, you know, you, the, the dawn breaks and you wake up in the morning. That's And that extension of that verse, when the knowledge of the glory of the God will fill the earth like the yes. ocean covered the seas or yes. whatever it is, like the water covers the seas. Spiritual enlightenment. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah, as you say, it's a turning point because David... Just how can he, he not is, acknowledge he the Lord? Yeah. The Lord, he's acknowledging it's by him that he can run against the truth. He can leap over the wall. It's I think all he's of God. Right. When he was anointed king at Hebron, he is now, that the anointing that he had been anointed with yes. years ago is now coming online yes. in, in a big way. Yeah. And, and he's, 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 he's going to have to hold back a little yeah. because he can't operate in that anointing quite yet yeah. because Israel hasn't come back to him. It's the same with Christ, but we can apply it to us. But this is, for instance, for by you, I can run against a troop. By my God, I can yeah. leap over all. Yeah. He realizes that his enemies will just fall yeah. before him. Nothing can stop, yeah. can stop him. And uh, we can apply that to ourselves, I believe, in yeah. Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens yes. me. That's it. Which is, which is the New it. Testament version of this. Brilliant. Yes. Just, to, just, to <laughs> yeah. just to point out, I'm not, I'm not being too pedantic, I hope, if I say that we're we're, all, we're well past halfway in this Bible study. Yeah. <laughs> we've done four of 24 right. verses. Well, we can we'll do probably see how we go now, because we've done the take. basis for it. <laughs> exactly. Um, and it, what you said, verse 30, as for God, his way is perfect, yeah. the word of God is proven. So mm. David is saying, God's proved his word in yeah. my life, and it's going to come to pass yeah. also on the bigger scale. He's a shield to all who trust in him. Mm. For who is God except the Lord and who is a rock except our God? Yeah. So he, he acknowledges that God is the one who gives us the victory. Yeah. He's our shield. He's our power in the spiritual warfare. Mm. And um, God, he is the foundation for our life. He's mm. our, our rock. It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. These are all good yeah. confessions, you know. Because God, His way is perfect. He makes our way perfect. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. He's strong. He strengthens us. Um, yes. Yeah, He's acknowledging the Lord completely. There's not one element of David taking credit That's no, right. for not anything. One. Not one. Amazing. And, and, and we really need to learn from that because we profess all these things, but we generally don't walk in them. Yeah. And, and why is that? Do we, do we actually not believe it. Yeah. Is that what it comes down to? Yeah. Because we should be unstoppable. That's right. We should, like David, you know, the, the, the things that are going on in the world, we should be able to speak into them and they should stop, but they so, don't. Yeah. And I'm not trying to bring us under condemnation or anything like that, and obviously the, 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 the spiritual atmosphere is, is pretty or, mucky. Or equally moment. not to, to be phony and pretend that we're like David when we're not. Yes. That's the that's danger just, as well. Yeah. But also we have to establish our... 
faith is like we, we believe the word mm. and we confess it before we see it come to pass. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. So these are things that, that we have to plant our faith in. I mean, I'm thinking of verse 33. He makes my feet like the feet of deer. He sets me on my high places. And mm. the high places, if we think of that operating in the Holy Spirit, yes. that, yeah. that the, the kind of skill that a deer has in operating in these, yes. in these narrow places, yes. you know. And I'm thinking that we need to believe God. And, you know, sometimes I look, look back on my life and I'm thinking, well, you know, Am I really in God's will in these situations? But then I look back and I and I, th I see that actually God has been arranging events and, in a sense, I was at the right place at the right time yeah, and this happened and then that. I wasn't that conscious of it at the time, but I, I was doing my best to be led by the Lord, yeah. and and it wasn't obvious at the time I was being led by the Lord, but, God's Spirit did, it's navigate your, it's me your calling through this. Yeah, it's your calling. I mean, we're not all called to be warriors like David. David wasn't called to build a temple, yeah. you know, to collect the materials, yes. And so to do what you know, we, we need do. to know. We need to know what, what's our calling. But, but yeah. the principles apply, the principles whatever apply. our calling is. Absolutely. The By his apply. anointing on us, we, we can say, Lord, you're giving me skill. Yeah. In, or by the power of the Holy Spirit, I am walking the right path and I am operating in, in your wisdom, mm. you know, yeah. and it's through God's anointing. Yeah. And he teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. Again, I'm not sure I've ever, have you ever done that? That's no, hard, I, no. I'd like to think I That's do. supernatural strength. Yes, it, it is really. To yeah. do what you couldn't do in the, in That's the natural. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and we could apply this to our spiritual. So this is David's feeling empowered. Yeah. He knows the potential and, and likewise Christ has this power yeah. right yeah. now. And he, he makes war through us. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then in 35, you know, this, this shield reappears. Mm -hmm. It's the shield of your salvation. Yes. It says in verse 30, he's a shield to all who trust in him. We yes. were talking last week about how effective a shield mm -hmm. can be. It is, yeah. you know, Paul says that the helmet of salvation, but it, um, David's talking about the shield of salvation. Yes. It's, it's yeah. important to... Well, the shield of faith. Yeah. yeah, but no, what I'm saying is David's talking about the shield. You have mm. given me the shield of your salvation. Yeah. So he turns it into, you know, merged the helmet with the shield, yeah. as it were. So he is, David is fully prepared for The shield warfare. protects your heart, doesn't it? The, the helmet protects yeah. your head and yes. your thinking. That's right. But somehow David's wangled the two together that, you know, it's protecting your head and your heart, I should think. Well, the shield, in a sense, protects the whole yeah. body. Yeah. The breastplate protects the heart. Yeah, good point. Specifically, yeah, that's but true. the shield is a, that's true. covers everything. Yeah. You know. That's yeah. David is because he's a, you know, he's been brought up as a good Jewish boy. Yeah. So he knows the scriptures, he knows the Torah and and these verses here remind me as I was making my notes mm. immediately it reminded me of Deuteronomy 32 3 yeah. to 4. Let's have a look. Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32, verses 3 and 4. Shall I read it? Yes. For I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect, mm. for all his ways are justice, a God of truth and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. That reminds me of a Dave Fellingham it's, song. Mm -hmm. It's a song, isn't there? Which God is God of faithfulness. Yes, yes. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. Ascribe greatness to the to Lord our God. Our God. Yes. It, it's a, a wonderful words. Perfect. And this is, David is sort of rehearsing yeah. that, that sense yeah. here. And we have to ascribe greatness, every success. And ev however trivial it is, it might exactly. not be very dramatic, exactly. but it's a success. Yeah. Ascribe it to God. Mm. Ascribe it to him yes. because it is a great victory in a sense, mm -hmm. however small. Yeah. Yeah, totally agree acknowledge him and your, your um, right hand has held me up yep. you know, the hand of the Lord yeah yeah it's, it's again the power of the Lord when, and in the our spiritual warfare we up. can only do it by the yep. Holy Spirit before all the armor stuff Ephesians 6 10 be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might yes mm. so we we are anointed for that spiritual warfare and so forth but it's only by his anointing his power yeah but he juxtaposes it with your gentleness has made me yeah, great. Yeah, that's an interesting So, answer. you know, in other words, that great power of the Lord, it, it doesn't crush us. 
No. Mm. He holds you in the palm of his hand. Yes. Gentle. Exactly. Yes. The, the anointing is, Again, my yoke like is the, easy, my like burdens. the mother hen, you know, is just Yeah, it's, 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 it's there in uh, Isaiah 40 as well, where you have, um, you have that juxtaposition of the gentleness. I, I think it's the way he, he, it says that he cares for his, for his uh, flock or his lambs. And then, I haven't got my Bible, I've got yours here, Gentle. Derek. But then the, uh, he talks, I mean, we're talking about how God, the nations are like a, a drop in the bucket um, compared to him. And he brings princes to naught. Uh, but he, uh, I can't find it in my Bible, where, where it says that he um, gently leads those who are with young. That's verse mm. 11. So he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm, carry them to his bosom, and gently lead those who are with young. And then it, it you know, just scales right out. So there's something about the scriptures. It can do the, the, you know, the really detailed, you know, precise caring, you know, not crushing. And yet the enormous great power of Almighty God is, is doing that. His Holy Spirit is gentle yes, in us. Yes. He doesn't force himself on us. Yes. But he, he makes us great as we Absolutely. let his gentleness fill our character too. Yeah. Um, Very moving. True greatness is to be gentle. Very moving. To be a servant of yes. all. Again, I just see, you know, there's this little chick he's just nurturing and holding, you know, and then he, you enlarged my part. So he's then mm. nurturing and enlarging, you're mm. maturing us yes. um, for his service so that we're, we're, we're equipped yes. to fight. Now it changes gear. Yep. Right? Because now. We're talking about David now. The next stage of his career is when all Israel comes to him. Yeah. Now, finally, he can overcome all the enemies yeah. surrounding exactly. him. And likewise with Christ, when Israel come to him, he can return in power and glory and overcome all the enemies of the armies of, of the Antichrist from all the nations yeah. of the world. Yeah he will overcome them to establish That's his right. kingdom. So we can probably deal with the so next verses So in the typology, uh, the, the Lord doesn't want any to perish, but all to come to repentance. Mm. That's written after them saying, oh, well, everything's going to carry on as it always has since mm. the beginning in 2 Peter 3. Um, and, and, and now, as it were, we, well, in, in the eschatology, we get, we get to the epics of, of like the flood or, but there, there is Gomorrah, you know, you're suddenly in this enormous scale from, from being through the church age of the Lord being quite gentle with us, really. Yes. And in the tribulation, you yeah. see, th things will not be normal. No, so, be dramatic. So they will the have scale. opportunities to repent in that time. Yeah. But those who have still hardened their heart at the end of the tribulation, it is judgment time yeah. now. And now those enemies, he's going to move out. That anointing we're going to talk about, he's going to we've talked about he's going to release fully mm. and now David moves into action yeah. and he's able to destroy all the enemies that, yeah. that surround yeah. him and Christ will do the same in, sh in short time because they cannot right. resist that kind of power. No, and so we can probably deal with this quickly. And he's, no, we you can, know. but I just want to go on the typology one more time. Yeah. But just looking at the whole of human history that we had very dramatic events you know, in the formation of the mountains, very dramatic events with the, the fountains of the deep, mm. you know, rising up and the flooding of, of the earth. You know, yeah. it's, it's that kind of scale of yeah. drama exactly. when the Lord comes to rule. Yes. Yeah, because his power is overwhelming yeah. when, he, when he chooses to yeah. use it. Yeah, carry and, on, and let's so, go. You know, I, I, he's looking back now at once he is uh, made king, yeah. you know, all the enemies yeah. capitulate before him. I've pursued my enemies and I've overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again until they were destroyed. This is ultimately Armageddon. Yeah. I have wounded them so they could not rise. They've fallen under my feet. It's total destruction. You've armed me with strength for the battle. You've subdued under me those who rose up against me. For you've given me the necks of my enemies so that I destroyed those who hated me. Mm. They cried out and there was none to save, even to the Lord, but he did not. It's too yeah, late. It's yeah, judgment day. Yeah. They had their chance. Then I beat them as fine as the dust before the wind. Daniel it too. always brings a smile to John's face. He loves to see I, I, the Lord triumph. I do. <laughs> I love the it. passages. I can't you, wait. You know, you're jumping <laughs> on. Your seat. It, is, it, it, it is apocalyptic, isn't it? Yes. This is, it is high, apocalyptic. high stakes yeah. stuff. 
Because in yeah. Daniel 2, do you remember the stone coming from heaven? Yeah. Destroys that statue That's which right. represents the nations of the world. Yeah. And it says the whole statue was ground to fine dust. Yeah. And then the stone became a mountain that filled the earth. Uh, Christ is that stone that that then his kingdom fills the earth. And and it says he beat them as fine as dust. This is total destruction. It is. I mean, this is blitzkrieg in in its original form. Or it's Grozny. Shock and awe. It's just bombing to debris. Yes. You know, Grozny or Aleppo. It's it's, it's pretty fearsome stuff. Which which brings me back to say, um, how do we justify it? I mean, I know how I, how I read the scriptures and, and the, the judgment of the wicked, but that, that's judgment. why is it important for the, for, the, for the wicked to be judged? Well, why, otherwise why wickedness would continue forever, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's it, exactly. Yeah. And increase. God's, it's not God, a static thing. God yeast. gives people a chance to they've repent. Had masses of chances. So yeah. I destroyed those who hated me, but yeah. they've had plenty of chance yeah. to mm. come to the point where yeah. they don't hate him. And many will be saved in the tribulation, yeah. but those who have chosen to reject him, yeah. there, there are consequences. And God, God, the goodness and the severity of God, and the severity is the cutting off of God. Mm. He, he, there is, mm. he is not infinitely patient in the sense that he... So those who say, well, you know, we, we, let's, you know, the brotherhood of man, let, you know, peace, peace man, and, and uh, you know, and, you know, ne- let's just say the word peace and it will happen. Mm. They're not really um, in the real world, are they? Peace is because established through war. Yeah. It, it often is, yes. Peacemaking is often uh, yeah, established through confrontation of evil. And, w- and without that, you know. And, and it comes right to the, the, the heart of the gospel as well. The Lord didn't just sit back and say, oh, no, I, I, want to so- I don't want to sort of unruffle feathers, so I'll just let sin and death reign you know for all eternity no he confronted the, the evil the wickedness of death and pain and suffering directly head on and the question and defeated it yes and I, and I think you know where where we're told that jesus wept and how he wept particularly when lazarus died i mean there was part of which he was joining in the sorrow of the family. Yeah. I don't doubt that for one moment. Mm. But I mean, it was, this was much deeper than that, I'm quite sure. You know, it, it, it didn't have to be this way. Yeah. Of course, it did have to be this mm. way. But yeah. I mean, I'm putting it in human terms because I don't have the language to explain it. Yeah. But the consequences of sin, I just broke his heart. Yeah. Mm. In, in his human heart. Just, exactly. It, it just so exactly. desperately sad. Exactly. So we've got 10 minutes left. So there's your challenge, <laughs> Eric. Well, and I, I would say quickly, yeah. the question is not why does God judge, yeah. but why has God delayed so long Correct. in judgment? Because that's of it, that's in the real patience, question. In his divine forbearance. When you know the horror sins of sins committed beforehand unpunished. He's, he's for God he has divine forbearance. Yeah. Because if he was us, he probably would have. So, Ryan, I'm going to stop that now. Quickly. That's the, more yeah. of the question. Yeah. But anyway, the, the next stage, see, Revelation 19 is the Battle of Armageddon. Yeah. Revelation 20, he now establishes, he subdues the nations under him. Yeah. All those who remain alive among the nations and in Israel are now believers. Mm. Revelation 20, he will now reign for a thousand years. Yeah. Okay. So now the, the psalm moves into that now. He mm. says, you, David verse, is looking back. Verse Verse, verse 43, yeah. David is looking back now because he writes this psalm once he's won all these victories, right? Now his kingdom is established. He's defeated the surrounding nations. And now he declares and he gives thanks to God. You have delivered me from the strivings of the people, mm-hmm. both internally and externally, mm-hmm. the resistance to the, his rightful authority. Yeah. You've made me the head of the nations. Mm-hmm. He's, he's become the chief nation and that of course is Christ fulfilled in Christ. David the surrounding nations but it was really fulfilled in the Lord. Yes. Yes. All the nations. Literally will be the head of all the nations Mm -hmm. and Zechariah 14 all nations will come and worship the Lord at the Feast of Tabernacles. He'll be king over the whole earth. Praise God. And that was promised in the Davidic covenant. A people I have not known shall serve me. That's that's a classic isn't it? He's talking about. I mean that that's a so is David looking um, uh, prophetically, I, I know we, we are casting it, the light, as it were, right to the end of time, mm. but is he looking prophetically towards? He hasn't yet subdued all of his surrounding enemies because he's saying, 
a people I have not known shall serve me. Is that a fair well, comment? Well, you can't build too no. much on the Hebrew tense. He's, okay. he's really talking about the millennium and Gentile salvation in the millennium. No, I know, but Dave, he is. But he's also talking about his own life, as I understand oh, David, it. yeah. And yeah. so I'm thinking that this was written before he actually did conquer all, all the nations. No, I don't think that he's just stating the fact that people that I have not known shall now serve me. Oh, okay, yeah. good. That's yeah. how he I has, see it. Okay, good. Yes. He, the psalm, yeah. as it says in the title, was written once he had won his victory. Okay, so I'll just check so, it. And, and so as yeah. a result, they yeah. will now serve him. Yeah. The Edomites and the Good. Philistines are not, will be s yeah. under his yeah. authority. And as it's soon quite as a statement, isn't it? Yeah. It's quite a statement. yeah. That, that's conquest, isn't but it? But more importantly, in the Messiah, it's talking about Gentile of salvation. Of course. Of and course. it's talking about us in the church age yeah. too. Yeah. Gentiles, which, which is obvious to us, but for, for the Jews at that time, the fact yeah. that the Gentiles will serve the God of Israel yeah. is, is um, yeah. you know, a big idea. Um, as soon as they hear of me, they obey, they obey me. me. That's amazing. The foreigners submit to me. That's, that's, sa that's saving every faith. Every knee shall bow. Yes. Every tongue confess. God has raised him to the highest place. It's, it's, it's there in the New Testament. Yeah. But, but it's, it's, it's salvation, you see. Yeah. Uh, you, they hear the gospel yeah. and they submit to him. Yes. Yeah. And that they show their faith by their obedience. Yeah. And, and so it's saying Gentiles will be saved in the millennium. Mm. Mm. The, the, it's not just the Jews that are saved, yeah. the Gentiles are saved. That's and right. The that, foreigners. That, um, that's quite a state, I know we're in our last five minutes, so, um, that every knee shall bow and every tongue mm. will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's pretty yeah. powerful. But that doesn't mean that everyone will be saved. No. It's just they have to acknowledge. Ultimately, yes. every knee will they bow. Have missed, they will have missed the boat. But it's best that you bow voluntarily. Yeah. Because, but one yeah. day, your knee will be forced to be bowed. Yeah. Yeah. So the foreigners fade away. They come frightened from their hideouts. Again, yeah. that's their submission. Mm. They're surrendering. Yeah. The, and then it finishes with the doxology. Doesn't it? And completely honoring the Lord. Mm. It's so tempting to then again say, look at what to write, you know, Sennacherib's prism or something and talk about all your conquests of the, of the surrounding nations, but he just goes straight into... The glory to God. Glory in God, yeah. Do you want to read it? Yeah, I would, I would love to, but I think it's John's turn. So... What to read what? Verse 46, which, which fits in with, you know, the Deuteronomy passage. That yes, you the Lord lives. Blessed be my rock, that the God of my salvation be exalted. Yes. Is that it? It's the Lord, yeah. That's it. it is yeah. God who avenges me. It is God who he delivers me from my enemies. You also lift me up against those who, again, he says, and you've delivered me from the violent man. Yes. There's, I think that's a reference to the Antichrist yeah. in the Messianic yeah. fulfillment, Very good. that this is his victory over the yeah. uh, Antichrist. Therefore, verse 49, I will give thanks to you, Lord, among the Gentiles, in mm. fellowship with the Gentiles, mm. and sing praises to your name. Mm. By the way, that's fulfilled in our church services. Yes, that's right. Because that's right. when we are praising God, Jesus is in the midst of us, giving thanks to God yes. also, um, and, and it's a miracle that Gentiles, yeah. this is not just Gentiles who are subdued and forced to bow the knee, yeah. these are Gentiles who are actually saved. Yeah. He's in fellowship with them, he's among them. And so it's a prediction of Gentile salvation through, through the Messiah in the church age and in the millennium. Mm. Um, and this was quoted by, by Paul now in I'm Romans 15. Now I'm thinking about him again, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise, my great Redeemer's praise. Um, and what, what's, the, what's that next, the next one? Um, to spread through all the world, yeah, well, the, glories. the glories of his name. The glories of his name. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Okay, so I may have raced you too quickly because we're now, we're now going well, to... No, no. Well, no, no. Well, verse 49 is yeah. interesting because it's quoted by Paul in Romans 15. Yeah. To talk about that when Christ came, not just for the Jews, but for the Gentiles yeah. also. Yeah. So in Romans 15, 8, he says, Now I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision, that's the Jews, for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made to the fathers, and 
verse 9, that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, for this reason, I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. So yes. this is applied to the Messiah. This yes. is a proof that it's a messianic yeah. psalm, that through the work of the Messiah and the victory of the Messiah, Gentiles will come to the Lord. Yeah. And yeah. that was in the millennium. Mm -hmm. But also, and James uses an argument like this to say, it, since Gentile salvation, without them becoming Jews, they're still Gentiles, but they're saved. Yeah. If that was predicted for the millennium, then that's consistent with Gentiles yeah. coming to Christ yeah. in the church age also. I, I'm thinking of another doxology when I listen to this, so the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. I mean, this completeness of God's plan that salvation could come to the Gentiles, mm. that all the nations could be, yes. could be brought in. And, um, and mir the, the great miracle of all, that the Jewish people will accept Jesus yeah, uh, as, as well. their Messiah. Because that's the great anomaly, I think, of the ages, that they don't. And it, it's almost a miracle in itself that they don't acknowledge that Jesus is Well, it is, because is their the eyes have been veiled. They can't yes, see it. Exactly. I mean, they, they, they've been prevented from it's seeing it. It's against all natural intuition. Yes. The, 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 the one spoken of in their own scriptures, they don't yeah. accept. Yeah. That, and that's God's, you know, the, the, the mystery of, of the salvation of Israel and, and of the nations. But we are, we are proofs that Jesus is the Messiah because yes. we are Gentiles. Yeah. We are fulfillment of this verse here yeah. ourselves. Yeah. That um, th through Christ we are joined to, to Christ as Gentiles. Yeah. Praise God. Is, we didn't have to become Jews yeah. for no, this. That's right. Exactly. We're still Gentiles. But we are... And we're brought into the commonwealth of Israel. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, so we've got, we've got about a minute. Well, you've well, been... Final, verse 50. Final nuggets. Well, yeah, I was going <laughs> to read that at the end if you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. I was just going to say, the, these three or four verses are summed up again by Paul. Rejoice always, and again I say rejoice. Yeah. As you meditate on this, as you read it, as you think about what yeah. has been said today, yeah. you just can't do anything else but rejoice. Yeah. And, and there's power in that. There's mm. spiritual power in rejoicing. Mm. Amen. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, for, for from him and to him and through him yeah. are all things. Yes. To God be the glory. Um, great deliverance he gives to his king and shows mercy to his anointed, mm. to David and his descendants forevermore. Mm. Are we the descendants of David? The seed, because it's his seed forevermore. So yeah, Bless you. David is. Thanks, John. Thank you, everyone.